let's go on the beach maybe. Another session with a client today that was also really hard and I, there's so many things we could talk about oh my god that's so fascinating I just love this work I love the work of understanding people understanding ourselves and understanding others and 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 like opening doors so that people can understand themselves I think it's a really big deal so she's struggling with something she's kind of been hitting her head up against the wall and I'm like kind of over and over again. And we've been working together for almost a year. And this little problem has kind of like stuck its head out from time to time, but it hasn't really been an issue like that had to be addressed until now. And it's affecting all these other things. Like it's affecting her stress levels. It's affecting her finances. It's affect, but like, it's not about actually those things. It's underneath that. So the work that we did today was super interesting because she located a part of herself that wanted to be fired as a client that was, that was like, that's been sabotaging everything she's doing so that I will fire her. <laughs> consciously she doesn't want to be fired at all she like cries at the thought of being fired she loves our work she totally wants to keep going but there is this other part of her it's a small part and it's a young part that is just a complete no and guess which part has been driving that one so here was the kind of miracle of of today and i, I want to give us both a shout out because this is revolutionary she located that. The fact that she was able to identify, oh, there's this part of me that is just begging for you to fire me. Huge awareness, huge awareness. And then I was like, oh shit, like I've been doing a terrible job firing you. Like it, it's my job to give my clients what they want. At a, at a very basic level, if I can possibly give them what they want, that's my job. So immediately it was like, well, I haven't been firing her at all. I've been doing the opposite. I've been, in it. I've been doing everything I can possibly do to keep her in the container. But here she is, she's got this part that wants to be fired. Who am I to not give that part what they ask for? So I fired that part. <laughs> we did a beautiful little sort of ceremony and she got to experience both. She got to, it's so important. She got to experience from the part of her that, let's say the more conscious or adult self, the devastation of hearing me say you're fired. As a client, I'm firing you. But she also got to experience this young, small self feel this huge wave of relief, like at last, at last, someone is fucking paying attention to me. At last, someone is seeing me, at last. Oh my God, have you guys ever had the experience of, of being fired from a job that you hated? I mean, that's an awesome feeling. <laughs> and the, this is the complexity, this is such a, beautiful microcosm of the complexity of our consciousness, our psyche, because we are made of multiple parts. We are not just one thing. We don't want just one thing, right? So we have a part of us that wants to grow and we have another part of us that wants to run and hide like little bunnies. That's our nature. It will always be this way. And when we try to like brush things under the rug or, or we just don't even have the awareness of those other parts, or when we try to like round up, like it's a very spiritual thing to be like, you know, this whole thing so, kind of sucks, but like everything's fine. Like 
There's all these things that we do that are just nonsense, crazy making. Because it's so terrifying to look at these parts that we're in conflict with. So she did it. She did it today. And she let herself be fired. And she let me fire her. And I fired her. And she let herself have the whole feeling experience of that, both the elation and the devastation. And the experience gave her the felt sense of what it's like to listen to herself. What it's like to actually pay attention to what the inside is asking for. And in this case, it's like, you know, let's say this part of her that wanted to be fired was like five years old, let's say. That part shouldn't be doing much of anything in our work, <laughs> right? We're doing very high level, very emotionally mature, very adult work. We're talking about very adult things. Five-year-old should not be responsible for that. Five-year-old didn't hire me. Five-year-old doesn't want to do the work that I ask people to do. Five-year-old should be fired. Five-year-old should fire me. No wonder the five-year-old acts out. No wonder the five-year-old like wants to take the reins and drive the car into the ditch. Five-year-old shouldn't be in charge of that stuff. So when we have the awareness of these parts of us, we simultaneously and instantaneously, we have the capacity to give those parts what they want, what they need, what they are asking for on the inside. We get to let them take a vacation. We get to let the five-year-olds sit in the back of the car and stop driving. We get to let them play with their toys. We get to let them ask for what they want and have what they want. Because we don't have to anymore be identified as only them or only not them. We're very multidimensional in here. Got lots of parts, lots of voices, lots of entities, lots of creatures. So, it's interesting as I'm sharing the story because I'm thinking of this one client that I spoke with today, but in fact, this is at the heart of the work that I'm doing with almost all my clients, one-on-one. -on -one. Anyone that's working with me one-on-one -on -one is working to build a seven-figure business and they are facing all the parts of themselves that they have not been brave enough to look at before. They're facing all the parts of themselves that feel intimidating or scary or just like, like they have some judgment or shame around. They just have to, it's just like, hello. And it is not for the faint of heart. This is not, it's not trivial. This work is not trivial. It's really, really not. It is deeply demanding, deeply personal, spiritual work. And I don't wanna say that it's hard because it's the most, it's like, as we uncover these parts of ourselves, we get to love them. We get to give them the love that they have wanted our entire lives. We get to repair it ourselves. We get to refill ourselves. We get to refuel ourselves. We get to reprogram ourselves. Sometimes I think of it like a Jenga game, right? Jenga is like that game where you pull out those things and you put them on top. When you look at a Jenga game like halfway through, there's a lot of holes in the foundation and it makes it unstable. That's the whole point of the game is like to, you know, how unstable can it be before it topples? You don't want to be the one who topples it. And the work that I'm talking about is really about identifying where are these holes? Where are these parts of ourselves that didn't get what they wanted or aren't getting what they want now? I take that back. There are always parts that didn't get what they needed when they were young that show up and sabotage now. And going back and listening to them now, doing now what our parents couldn't do then, doing now what we couldn't do then. It's not too late. It's not too late and the work is so, ugh. like when we really hold those parts and love those parts, It's really powerful, really powerful. I, I, I'm like speechless. I'm not trying to be vague or, uh, you know, abstract. It's, it's hard to put language to because 
emotional mature we're really talking about emotional maturity like stepping into our full adulthood is the process that we experience when we start to parent ourselves and when we do that that's when we get free adulthood is meant to be the expression and experience of freedom that's not what most people experience as adults but that's what it's meant for psychologically so that's our task and when we do that money's easy when we learn how to deeply love all parts of ourselves money's easy when we learn how to be the one who creates the container of belonging for all parts of ourselves no matter how unconscious or distasteful or difficult they are the money comes when we learn how to actually be a field of love for all parts of ourselves we teach ourselves how to receive and when we learn how to receive the money comes so more and more i'm seeing this that the truth of the work that i do with people around money is really about love <laughs> is really about like the most hardcore serious level love the non trivial love and then the money comes everything you bought already